In this After Effects video, we're gonna talk about five typography styles for your titles. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. The title says it all. We're gonna talk about five title animations right inside of After Effects. In our first style, we're gonna take a look at revealing on our titles using masks. So here we are in our first technique. You can do this with one or two titles. It doesn't really matter, but we're gonna be using two titles for this technique. And simply what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our first main title and we're gonna hit P on keyboard for position. We're gonna add a keyframe for this and we'll move this keyframe forward in time because this is gonna be our last final keyframe. Then we can use the Y position to move this downward like this. And if you have a second title, you can do the similar thing, hit P on keyboard for position and you can move that keyframe forward in time and move this up. Now you're gonna get an animation like this and you know, that's not good. So what we're gonna do, first of all, is maybe make all these keyframes easy, easy keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard and toggle switch the modes and turn on motion blur for all these layers and turn it on the top. So what we'll do here is grab one of the title layers and go to layer pre-compose and we can call it main title and click okay. And then we'll pre-compose the second title and we'll call it subtitle, boom. From here, what we'll do is come here to the top and grab the rectangle tool and we'll grab our main title and we'll just draw out a mask like this. Just right over our title like that, cover up the entire title and then we'll copy the mask, go to the second you know, title subtitle here, paste that mask in there, hit M on your keyboard for mask and set the mask from add to subtract. And now you can see that the titles appear from one another just like this and of course you don't have to come out from the middle you can do it from the side or whatever but this is a way that you can use the masking techniques to have your titles come out from each other or just from a specific place on the screen our second technique is very similar to our first technique but this time we're going to use shapes to cover up the mask so for our next technique we're going to work with shapes and what we can do here is create a shape so we can do like the rectangle tool and you can use any tool that you really want. You can use the, even the pen tool, which could be really nice. We'll stay with a simple premise of a rectangle tool and we'll just draw out a rectangle or a square like this. Hold down shift drink, you can draw out a square. And what I would do is I would go to layer, transform, and click on center anchor point and layer content. So that anchor point is right in the middle of the square. And what we'll do here is we'll hit P on keyboard for position and we'll add a keyframe for it. We'll move forward. And what we'll do is maybe we'll move our square to the right side. I think that's fine. And what we do here is move forward by a second and a half and move our square to the other side just like this. So now we can see that we have animation here just like so. So does that. And also what we could do is hit S on keyboard for scale. We've got a keyframe for this. Move forward by a few frames and set down to 0%. So now we get something like this. So now we're going to get a square that's going to cover up our entire title like this. So what we're going to do is grab our main title here. Grab the rectangle tool again and make sure the main title is selected. And right when it covers up our first letter, what we're going to do is we're going to draw out a mask like this. Just cover up your title. Boom. Then we'll open up the mask one. We'll add a keyframe for mask path and we'll move forward to the end where our last letter pops up. So like right here or so. And what we can do is just grab the selection tool here at the top and we can move our mask completely over to follow the box. Set it to subtract. So now this follows the box no problem. And now we have a shape revealing in our title and that is really cool. And of course there are so many different ways you can animate titles and it can take a lot of time depending on how many tiles you're doing. So what I suggest doing if you're looking for inspiration or if you're looking to save time, so we can do shucker links in the video description and it'll take you to video hive where all these previews you're seeing right now are after effects title templates that are pre-made and ready to go meaning that you just have to swap out your text and logos and you can render these out and be done with an after effects project just within minutes so whether you need some ideas for your next project or you're just looking to save time go ahead and check our links in the video description and you can start viewing the thousands of title templates available on video hive so we've talked about animating our titles in with shapes and also by themselves. This time I wanna create a nice title design that works well with shapes. All right, so we're gonna marry shapes with titles. So we'll start off with a rectangle right off the start and we're gonna put a rectangle right over our you know thick motion title here and we can put this title underneath our motion title like this. And then we can toggle switch the modes until you see the track mat right here and go to the track mat and set this to alpha inverted mat. This is the shape layer now. So now you can literally see right through your rectangle like that. You can see this transparency. And of course we want to refine this rectangle so we can size this down by a little bit, make it just a little bit smaller. And then what we can do here is select the title and the shape layer, go up to window align and it's down over here and we can center these using the vertical tools 
<clears throat> so we know they're directly in the center. And also what I like to do here is grab the pen tool, click on the word fill and we'll set it to none, click okay. Click on the word stroke and set it to solid color, click okay. We can change the, uh, the stroke size down to maybe like three or so, that's four, that's fine. And then we'll add a point here, we'll hold down shift on our keyboard and click another point and draw a straight line like this, click off and boom, now we have a straight line right underneath this. And now let's go ahead and let's animate this. So this is a nice title design with shapes, but let's go ahead and animate this. Let's start with the shape layer of one, which is the box. Let's hit P on our keyboard for position and we'll add a keyframe there and we'll move forward by a second, move that keyframe forward by a second. And we can move this up and you see this will just be a square by itself. We can open up the shape layer one, go into the contents, go into the rectangle one, go into the rectangle path one. We'll break the chain for size and we'll add a keyframe for size. We'll move this keyframe forward in time and set the Y size down to zero. So now, boom, you just have a box just like that. And it looks cool. Make sure those last two keyframes align with each other. So now we just have this box that does that. And that's cool, of course, we might want to speed this animation up by a little bit, but make all these keyframes easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And then we can grab our line here and we'll do a very similar thing. We'll hit P on our keyboard for position. We'll add a keyframe for our line and we'll move this keyframe forward in time. And we'll just have it simply do this. So it'll do this animation, it'll come straight down like that. So you can already imagine what we're gonna do. We're gonna marry our masking technique with our lines. So what we'll do is we'll select our typography title, grab the rectangle tool, and we'll draw out a mask over our line like this. Boom, and then we'll hit MR keyboard for mask path, add a keyframe for that, go to the last position keyframe here. And we will just bring down our mask and follow the line. And of course, we'll hit subtract. Boom, that line brings it in just like that. And of course, you can animate the line in any way that you want. So we'll go to our line shape layer here. We'll go to add and let's add a trim paths. We'll open a trim pass one and we'll set the start to 50% and the end to 50%. And we'll add a keyframe for start and end. We'll move forward here, set the start to 0% and the end to 100%. So you get something like this and boom. And of course, we'll make all of our keyframes easy, easy keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard and turn on motion blur. So now we just put our last two concepts together to make one ultimate shape title. So for our fourth technique is a little bit more traditional on the animation side. We're gonna jump into individual animation controls so you can do whatever animation you want just with your title. All right, so for our fourth technique, we're gonna actually use individual animation controls here. So let's open up our you know title layer here and we'll click on text. So let's go ahead and open up our title layer and there's a tab here called animate. We can click on this button here and we can add a number of properties here. I'm gonna focus on say scale, for example. And unfortunately we won't be able to go through every property here. So you'll have to just experiment on your own time, but we'll come here and we'll add scale. And what we can do here is set the scale down to 0%. So what you might want to do here is keyframe the scale, but that's not what we're going to keyframe. We're going to open up the range selector one and we're going to add a keyframe for start. We'll move forward here to, I don't know, a second and a half and we'll set this up to 100%. Now, each letter is going to animate in just like that from a scale property. Now we can add a number of other properties in here, which we're going to do. So we can close animator one, make sure nothing's selected and we can go to animate and we can add another scale property. And what we're going to do here is we're going to scale our letters up even more. And from here, we'll move you know to the beginning of the timeline, maybe to seven or eight frames. We'll go to the range selector. We'll add a keyframe for start. We'll move past the last keyframe and we'll move this to 100%. So now you get like a little bit of an overscale and it'll bounce right back into position. And we can also say, go back to animator one, make sure it's selected, go to animate and add say a position here. And we can just lower down the position. So now uh, letters will just come in from there at the bottom, no problem, or any other place that we want it to. So this is a really cool way that you can just animate your titles very individually and create your own custom animation with these just separate animated properties. And of course, like I said, there's more than a few, so you'll just have to go check them out. And for our last and fifth techniques, a little bit more on the crazy side, but I figured I would do something kind of cool. So we're gonna do a little bit of glitch text where you can kind of break apart your title and it can be wherever you want on the screen. So take a look at it, it's really cool to implement. And for our final technique, we're gonna work for just a glitch effect. I think it's really cool just to kind of be able to do this. So what we'll do is go to layer, new, solid, and we'll call it glitch. Boom, go up to effect, noise and grain, and we're gonna grab fractal noise. From here where it says noise type, we're gonna set the block. We'll set the complexity down to one. We'll go into the transform settings here. We'll uncheck uniform scaling and we can increase the scale width. And we can of course decrease the scale 
uh, height here we can decrease the brightness so we'll darken this down a little bit and of course we can stretch this out as far as we want so you know get really cool there and then we'll do here is add a keyframe for evolution and we'll move here to the end of our timeline and we'll just increase the evolution by like 360 degrees so now you just have this animation in here and if, what we'll do from here is pre-compose our glitch here we'll call it glitch map and then we'll go up to layer new adjustment layer we'll bring the adjustment layer underneath our glitch map and we'll turn off the glitch map go to effect distort and we're going to add displacement map go to the displacement map layer and set it to the glitch map here at the top now you get a little bit of glitches going on here and what we can do is increase the max horizontal displacement a little bit and if this is too slow of course be sure to increase the evolution just as by as much as you can and now you just have a little bit of glitch going on here and of course you can keyframe the max horizontal and vertical displacement to go down to zero so it doesn't always glitch like that so there is just a slight little glitch in the title like that and you know looks pretty cool so that wraps up our five animation techniques that can be used in a variety of After Effects projects. Hope this video has been helpful. If it has, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sunduck Film. We post two post-production tutorials every week right here on the channel. Also, you can hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description. And always, be creating.